go. Wow, that's nice. Alright, good. Okay, so here's a rundown of how this is uh, put together. I'm a little bit hasty putting it together, mainly because the design had to be worked out a bit. I've got an axe head here with one of those backhoe parts that I cut the sides off so that the barbells would fit over here. Now I think these are, oh gosh, what are these? 20, 25 pound weight. So there's 50 pounds plus the way the clamps and the, and the bar um, that the, the uh, spring is taken care of. That spring is overcompensating for everything. I've got a triangular, probably can't see this, but going around it, eh? Okay, so yeah, and it's got it's got ends on it. It's a steel a piece of steel all the way across with a. cross beam there it goes all the way down to here and we want to anchor this one to the ground because uh, and at a whatever a height that makes it comfortable for this depending on how high you want to be um, off the ground so and I, I just used a piece of scrap steel you know there's a huge piece of steel out here and uh, We've got a standard car helper spring that is bolted at both ends. Uh, so it's bolted to the, the main bar, which is a good solid, you know, quarter inch thick. Yeah, this is a, not the ordinary fence post. It's a bit thicker than the ordinary fence post. And I've got it bolted. The spring is attached. Piece of steel, hole in it, clamped in, so that this end is free. You can see that it's free. There's no, there's no bar going all the way down. And then you do the same thing on the opposite end. Okay. And then. I'm using clamps to hold it down at the opposite end. I, I used a little piece of barbell at the bottom for a round, for the round at the bottom. And uh, so then, and another piece of steel, it is attached to the back of this. By this bolt. And, uh, it's got a little bit of a play back and forth um, going th uh, that way, a little bit of play this way. And uh, used aluminum, cut, cut some pieces of aluminum to create this. So I'm going to show you this pivot, a hole in the bar, screw going all the way through going all the way through okay and um, and it just pivots on that spring um, the clamps here this around like muffler clamps basically are holding 
the sides together in so that it doesn't uh, shift when it does its thing. And also, this bit I found out a little bit later was that as time goes on, the spring gets distended. The farther down it goes, let me see. You can see that the farther down it goes, it wants to shift and uh, that compensates for the spring's tension and the, and the angle. Again, this is all, you know, um, pretty, something you need to figure out. Um, this keeps that from bending over one way or the other, keeps the whole thing from falling one way or the other. Um, it's all a matter of uh, keeping it adjusted. Um, if I need to sharpen the axe head, I take the clamps off, take the barbells off, take my handle off, which is I've just made this basically just a piece of steel wrapped in, oh gosh, I just kept wrapping it. So I've got this nice comfortable handle so I don't wear my hands out. But uh, once you've got the barbells off, you can take the bolt out. And by rights, I should probably have a second bolt in here. I'm still in the process of finessing it. Um, I'd like to, and the more I use it, the more I find out what breaks and what's more important. And again, This thing is 50 pounds of kinetic energy coming down on a block of wood that uh, if you catch it when it's wet, this oak will split nicely. Of course, when it dries, it tends to twist and makes it a little harder along the way. Um, I did put a piece of concrete at the bottom underneath my, my platform here. Uh, which has, see, has split. So you can see how much energy we're putting into this. This is a pretty good size, about a four inch piece of concrete that I've been breaking into little bitty rocks based on the force. And uh, gotta say, I can split a quart of wood in about an hour. You get nice, uh, nice wet wood and uh, doesn't take any gasoline, doesn't take any force. Nice, it's a good idea to wear safety glasses, but you don't really have to worry too much about having something fly in an opposite direction and break a shin or anything. Um, getting to the point where I'm wondering if I even need the axes anymore. Um, you can chainsaw these into logs Try not to get them too long so that they'll split just fine and wow, you know, next thing you know you got, uh, you could even have an 80 year old man out here doing his own wood splitting and not hardly break a sweat. So, there you are. Okay, now that this thing's built, I've been chopped wood here. A nice flat surface. Get set up now. Dry wood. It's harder to chop. But it's not like swinging, right? A little bit easier job. Be careful, it's slightly on the other side. Get some pretty nice thin cuts.
just about in. Easy not to miss. Really a horrible amount of effort. I do this from my knees. Wow, that's nice. Right, good. That is kind of flat. There we go. Next, which Pulling it down because the weight is balanced. Oh, well, this weight balanced by the spring down there it gives it a credible amount of kinetic energy. You just can't do with an axe. Sometimes it gets caught, eh? So, there we go. One more. Just for good measure. 